All right, we're gonna take a quick look at Ghostopolis by Doug Tanapa. Will it be a quick look? I'll give you the spoiler-free review first, and then I'll flip through it and tell you what I thought was cool. By the way, I'm gonna be on uh, the Matriarchy next week to discuss this with a panel, so I'll link to Matt's channel in the description. Uh, sign up so you get notified when we go live with that. This is like the pre-review. Get my thoughts out there first before I go chat with the guys. All right, so uh, Ghostopolis, it's one of Doug's uh, more just fun books, like, hey, a kid gets uh, accidentally sent to a world of ghosts. So he's got to fight a bad guy there. Uh, though, since there are ghosts, there is some interesting uh, super, there is a supernatural element to it. And as per usual, it has some of Doug uh, integrating his Christian faith into the fantasy universe. And I think that this is a good example of, well, there are ghosts, right? So there's already a supernatural element. So his Christian ideas pair very well with the world of Ghostopolis. So uh, with that, I'd say, yeah, it's a really fun book. I check it out. So now it's spoilers. Let's talk about it. So uh, we meet Garth and Garth, uh, again, D Doug clearly loves Bill Watterson's Calvin and Hobbes. Garth has kind of like that vivid Calvin style imagination where he likes to imagine, you know, really gross and silly things. But we learn that Garth has an incurable disease and his mom has a lot of uh, you know, stress about this, of course. Meanwhile, <laughs> the uh, Glowies, the, there's a basically a CIA or uh, ICE agency that specializes in uh, sending ghosts back where they came from when ghosts illegally immigrate. So uh, the the agent is Frank Gallows. He's kind of a tired guy, a bit of a loser, a bit sloppy, sick of his job, and he captures Benedict Arnold and sends him back. Uh, they use drawings. Uh, they use a psychic cat to get drawings of where the ghosts are. And there's this interesting setup where, the, you know, the cat – has an idea of the picture, but the cat can't draw. So like the cat's handler has to draw it and it's kind of wonky and weird and hard to interpret. And then a few pages later, uh, Garth is drawing the same scene, but more, more representationally. So this is a hint that Garth has some sort of connection to the supernatural before everything starts happening. So uh, Gallows discovers the ghost is a nightmare. It's a, skele a skeleton horse. And because he's incompetent, he screws up the capture. And instead of sending the horse back to the ghost world, he sends Garth and the nightmare back to the world simultaneously. This gets him fired because this is he's been repeatedly screwing up on the job. So uh, Gallus feels guilty, of course, so he goes and meets his ghost girlfriend, Claire. So uh, someone's pointed out that a lot of Doug Tenapple's relationships involve kind of like, like uh, broken and weedy men who have like a really wonderful, wonderful girlfriend who has to see past their flaws. I've noticed the pattern too. So Gallows is kind of like a screw up. Uh, he's messed up his life. He was going to be dating this ghost girl and he was engaged to her. And it's implied that he dumped her and basically he just, he just got cold feet and he wasn't willing to commit. And she's left stuck here in the human world as a ghost and has been trying to get back ever since. So Gallows really screwed up. All right. So, uh, the boy is going to be going on an adventure. Gallows is a broken older man is going to be going on an adventure. Both of them have to learn to grow up, essentially. Uh, in the ghost world, uh, Garth bef befriends the horse and convinces it to let him ride it. And he meets his grandfather. But in the ghost world, his grandfather is about his age, like a 10-year-old boy with an aviator hat on. Uh, Garth is, was curious about his grandpa, but he's never met his grandpa. Uh, his, he knew his grandpa was a pilot, and apparently his grandma and mom got in a big fat argument over earrings, and they never saw each other again. So the idea is that in the ghost world, you are how old you are in levels of maturity. So even though his grandpa died an old man, in the ghost world, he's still a little selfish 10-year-old kid. Uh, the supernatural Christian element comes up when uh, – his grandpa tells him the story of Joe, the Tuskegee Airman. And uh, Joe has very strong uh, Christ-like aspects to his character. K kind of an it, it, What's interesting about Joe is he kind of works as an Aslan, you know, Christ allegory, but he also kind of works as just like a tough old uh, soldier who, who's lived in Ghostopolis a long time. So uh, Joe built every rock and stone in Ghostopolis. And because time in Ghostopolis is disconnected from human time in the human world, that meant he could basically work for millions of billions of years and no time has passed in our dimension. Uh, nobody's met Joe. Most people think Joe's a legend, but they know the city is there and the, the, and the world that he built is there. So we haven't met Jesus Christ, but you know Jesus Christ through looking at the world around him. Through that, through the cre creation, you know the creator. And Joe literally has a stigmata on his, on his hand. Uh, 
Anything else I want to say about Joe? No, we'll see. We'll see a little bit more of Joe later. So uh, the bad guy of the world is Wagner, a tall, lanky man. Uh, I even like how we when we transition to Wagner, it goes from white to black to show how evil and moody everything is. And Wagner, uh, Doug Tenapple likes bugs, by the way. Bug bad guys are always showing up. So Wagner has a bunch of hells from the uh, bugs from the underworld in his service. And he's clearly worried about Garth being a threat because ghosts are not constrained by the laws of physics in the human world. That's why ghosts can phase through objects and float around in our world. And humans are not constrained by the laws of physics in the ghost world, meaning that a human can be as powerful as they imagine themselves to be in in this world. So Garth is potentially a, a major threat. Frank, by the way, has this power too, but he's not that imaginative and not that clever and a bit neurotic. So he's afraid to use any powers like that. Uh, Garth's granddad starts kind of like making some realizations about how he screwed up uh, raising his daughter, uh, starts doing some self-sacrificial stuff to take care of Garth. And every time he does that, he grows a few years older because he's getting he's getting more mature. So uh, we learn we get some exposition on Wagner's evil doings. He appeared about 20 years ago. Uh, oh, this was set. I I'm going to go ahead and just spoil this. So there's a great uh, setup for Wagner where it's not like he's his dad or anything. Uh, th that that would have probably been a bit cliche, right? Like, you know, I'm your father. So the setup for Wagner is uh, the the whatever the ghost CIA have screwed up and sent a kid to the ghost world before. And the last time they sent a kid to the ghost world, they were never able to recover him. And he mysteriously, Wagner shows up 20 years ago, mysteriously has all these powers. So Wagner is the kid who the FBI wasn't able to save from the ghost world 20, 20 years ago. He's not like Garth's dad or Garth's uncle or Garth's long lost brother. He's, he's just some kid. Uh, who's acquired all this power. So uh, he did a very Emperor Palpatine th thing. First, he set up a uh, arbitrary war between the many races of Ghostopolis. Then he set himself up as a peacemaker and built a massive city uh, and took control of the power grid. So again, Doug Tenapple likes using insects and he always loves having like a bad guy insect with a gigantic butt. But so uh, Wagner controls a energy bug that essentially powers the entire town. If you oppose Wagner, he threatens to shut down the entire town. So we've got this interesting sort of like Star Wars prequel trilogy, uh, political conspiracy going on. And we have lots of different races of, of kinds of ghosts. There are zombies and there are mummies and there, there are will-o'-the-wisps and there are skeletons. And the skeletons are kind of King Arthurian type knights. And that's going to become important. Uh, meanwhile, Gallows and Claire are having their little romantic uh, tete-a-tete. -tete. She's mad at him because he dumped her, but she still kind of loves, loves him and hasn't gotten over those feelings. Uh, Garth's grandpa makes a sacrifice play and grabs uh, one of the lead, lead bugs. He actually trips and falls in the machine and they get teleported to the real world and of course his father's his grandfather's turning into an old man now that he's willing to sacrifice himself for garth uh he loses his grandpa and now he's got the only adults he has to help him out are claire and uh the cd frank gallows uh there's a great running gag by the way with benedict arnold where he keeps betray he betrays everybody all the time so he, he runs off to betray them to uh, Wagner, but then he betrays Wagner by leading them in the wrong direction. Later, he'll betray them again by revealing uh, what their plans are to Wagner. So Benedict Arnold is like uh, a infinite uh, singularity of betrayals within betrayals. So what we the the Bone Knights capture them and take them to the Bone King. And what we learn is that the Bone King isn't happy with Wagner's rule and that the Bone King is loyal to Joe. So if King Arthur is a good Christian uh, King Knight, uh, the Bone King is loyal to Joe, the Christ figure and the true r ruler and origin of the, of the world of Ghostopolis. Uh, also, there's a neat thing where uh, the nightmare that Garth trained, it belongs to the Bone King, so things are tying together nice, and it was a spirited mirror no one could tame. So the fact that Garth has tamed it kind of proves that he's a special kid. It's like, uh, it's like capturing the white stag in Arthurian lore. So uh, the Bone King has gathered all of the widows and orphans from Wagner's war and Wagner, Wagner's political takeover, and he's br bringing all of the widows and orphans to Joe. Joe heals them and then sends them through uh, the gap in the world away from Wagner. So it's basically escaping the sinful world and into paradise. And uh, it's not time for Garth to go there because Garth ne 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 never died. So all of the these ghosts are dead. They're in kind of like a purgatory world. Joe is guiding them out of the purgatory world into uh, the into their 
fi their final resting place. Uh, so again, we have more Christian imagery. He's healing. He's giving sight to the blind. Uh, when he talks to he, he, when Joe talks to Garth, he's very insightful about who Garth is and what Garth's problem is. Why won't you look at me? Because I'm afraid of you. You should be afraid of me. So like Aslan, Aslan's not a tame lion. You should be afraid of Aslan. Uh, and then a theme is established that you shouldn't be afraid of uh, death. You shouldn't be afraid of Wagner. What you should be, you should be afraid of me. You should be afraid of the true ruler of the world, but the true ruler of the world isn't an evil, wicked, selfish bastard like Wagner. The true ruler of the world is a kind, a kind and loving soul, but he is a powerful soul. Uh, be, so Joe gives Garth his mission to take out Wagner. This is a nice little foreshadowing, by the way, for the twist later, which is that Wagner doesn't know who Benedict Arnold is because he never went to school because he got teleported to this world as a little kid. And he's bitter about that. So let me talk about the theme, actually. So Garth has to grow up. He has to uh, learn how to cope with the fact that he has an incurable disease and his fear of death. Uh, Gar Gall Frank Gallows is kind of an immature idiot who never got his life sorted out. And uh, Garth's grandpa was a selfish jerk who uh, broke his relationship with his daughter. Uh, Gallows is a kid who had his life screwed up. He got teleported to a ghost world uh, by incompetent uh, government agents, and he's stuck here. So his life was kind of screwed up, and you know you feel sorry for him, but he's decided to become an evil dictator. So yeah, uh, nope, I don't feel sorry for you anymore when you start becoming an evil bastard. So ga uh, Gallo, I'm sorry, Wagner has never grown up, and he believes that his power is his ultimate source of protection in this in this other world. Garth, a actual child, is going to have to become more mature, mature than Wagner in order to uh, defeat his reign. More uh, kind of sexy romance between these two. Uh, this is kind of neat because it, it kind of works. Gallows is a rough, broken guy who never figured out his life. He never figured out his relationship with his girl, but he does love her. And she almost kind of like stupidly loves him even though he's never quite grown up and worked that out. And the, the big problem is he's alive and she's dead. So it seems like it's been fated that they can never be together. Bump, bump, but uh, foreshadowing for, for later. Uh, some of the skeletons, there's kind of interesting where you can die in Ghostopolis. So some of the, sol the skeleton soldiers are killed, uh, creating a distraction to let them bust into Wagner's energy plant. So a uh, heroic sacrifice, that, that's great. We have to make sure their sacrifice isn't in vain. Uh, there it is again, it's an evil insect with a giant bug. Wagner takes out the Bone King and the Bone King repeats a theme. Don't be afraid of Wagner, Claire, finish my work. So when you have a actual moral commitment, when you have a purpose, uh, things like the fear of death, you can put that aside because you have a higher ultimate goal you're striving for. Joe told Garth, don't be afraid of that disease. Be, uh, you, you should be afraid of me, but you shouldn't be afraid of that disease. Don't be afraid of Wagner. So we have to bring everything together and take out the totalitarian tyrant. Garth starts using his, because Garth has a vivid imagination, he starts kicking major butt with, with magic. Uh, and this is where the, the, the chief of the CIA uh, dun, 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 reveals the dramatic revelation that he was the one who was responsible for the kid being sent into the Ghostopolis and he was never able to recover that kid 20 years ago. So uh, that dramatic revelation out of the way, uh, the butt kicking commences and it uh, evolves into like a magic battle and then a giant robot battle as they imagine themselves as using parts of the building in the city as armor to create a mecha suit. Uh, there's a neat, okay, so what's Frank, Frank Gallo's problem is that he's been an immature uh, kind of man baby this whole time. So Gallo's, even though he doesn't have much magic power, joins with Garth uh, and basically tells Garth, look, Garth, now you have to win or I'll die too. And he loans Garth the little bit of power he has. It looks like all is lost and they, they can't overcome uh, Wagner's raw power. So Wagner's power is powered by hate and by 20 years of practice. So it's talent and imagination and hope versus pure hate and uh, commitment and uh, power by the iron fist crushing down. So uh, Gallows lends this last little bit of power uh, 
uh, Wagner starts making fun of Gallows and saying, wow, you must not have any imagination at all. But then the little thing that has crumpled up touches him and it explodes like a bomb. So uh, Gallows' idea must have been to cre create something really tiny that would implode out. And this tricks Wagner into thinking it's harmless before a giant page filling explosion takes him out. Uh, peace is restored. Uh, the, so here, the, the great twist is that Gallows was alive. He couldn't be with the ghost because he's dead. He sacrifices his life in a heroic play. He's dead and he's back. He's, he's back in the ghost world because now he's a ghost and he and Claire can be, be together. So Gallows got to grow up. Uh, Garth saved the day, but is still kind of sad. And he's worried that uh, my grandpa wasn't a good dad. My dad left, left me and I've never had a dad. What if I can, what if I die? What if I will never get to, what if I become a dad and I'm a bad dad like my dad, right? So I forgot to mention that earlier. That, that was one of the things he first talked about with his grandpa about his big, his big fear. So uh, Garth's big fear is what if I'll be a bad dad and he meets his son, who's an old man in Ghost Opera. So uh, this part I didn't think was set up that well. So I, it would make sense to me if time in Ghostopolis was different than our time. But this suggests that time in Ghostopolis is absolutely disconnected from our reality. So you can meet your son from the future in Ghostopolis because it has no connection to our timeline of events. Uh, I think even if you had like a few lines of dialogue, this twist could have been set up a bit better. But you know what? It's, it's Ghostopolis. It's a magic ghost world. I'll, I'll accept it. So he meets his son in the afterlife and his son tells him that uh, you survived, you had a, you got married, you had a kid, and you were the greatest man I ever knew. So Garth's big fear that he would die and that he would be a bad dad is alleviated uh, after his adventure in the ghost world. Uh, he says goodbye and goes back, and he brings uh, his uh, mom's earrings. So the, his grandpa had started the fight with his mom over these earrings. He brings them as a present to her, and uh, grandpa's ghost hears here hears that she forgave him and his and his grandpa's ghost fly, flies away. So his grandpa's spirit is able to rest because he's now at peace. He's been able to make amends for being a crappy grandpa in in life. All right, so it's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it, once the ghosts start showing up, uh, there's like a really great rush, you know, like getting away from the bad guys, stopping the bad guys. It's very basic. So I feel like uh, Earthboy Jacobus is a little bit more mythic uh gear was a little bit more silly and kind of dug to apple doing goofy you know r-rated edgy indie indie stuff and ghostopolis is more dug to apple doing a preteen adventure story with a little bit of his weird creativity making the ghost world feel fun crazy and weird and then ha the human characters are pretty grounded like a normal kid who's grappling with fear fear of death. It, that's a great irony too, is a kid who's grappling with fear of death is sent to a ghost world where every, everyone is dead. So uh, this is one of, I'd say, Doug's most solid fun, fun books. Not as crazy and kooky as some of his others, but de a ton of fun. So I can't wait to talk about it with the matriarchy and the rest of the gang. That's it. Normal Marmaduke fan. Love you guys. This is a really crummy library copy, by the way. I, I took a risk on eBay. It only cost me four bucks, but very co copy spilled on it, beat up, but whatever. I'll, I'll probably read this a bunch of times with the, with the uh, nephews and nieces when they have sticky Cheeto hands. So I won't have to worry. I don't have to worry about their Cheeto hands getting, putting our orange dust all over my books if they're a library book. That's it. Love you guys. Catch you later.